Well, today we're building a small project using the Anchor pseudocode compiler. This is a language that is exactly like C. In fact, it is C. It's just missing some curly brackets and braces and one layer of parentheses. But that's it. This is C. And we're going to show you how to build a C project um, and to make a project with a shared library, with or without the shared library. And we can include the shared library and build it right into the executable, and that's called a static build. Or we can split it off, and then other programs can access the functions in it. This template is going to support four major build styles. We've got Linux versus Windows, and a static versus a shared build. The static build is all combined into one executable with no dependencies. Everything's rolled into one package. A shared build requires an external or a shared DLL file, or, or you know, Linux would be .so. The shared library um, is linked to at runtime. And it can be loaded at runtime too, but we're not going to do that uh, on this project. Yeah, so it's static versus shared. Our targets are going to be uh, let's see, dupe and uh, libdupe. And that'll just print uh, a word several times. So you'll be able to go dupe some word and then uh, the number of times and it'll repeat that word uh, several times. Okay, that's the application. That'll be the uh, optional library here. We're going to build uh, libdupe DLL on Windows. And we'll build uh, dupe exe on Windows. And we can start with a source code. Normally it would be dupe.c. That would become dupe.exe. And libdupe.c will become libdupe.dll on a normal project. But we're going to use our pseudocode compiler, which is the same thing, really. It's all C when it gets done with it. The uh, ANCH files are compiled into C files, and then those are made into an exe. And same down here. And we have a make file that'll tell it how to do all that. And that'll be part of this project. And one more thing, and that is libdupe h. That is a shared or a uh, um, header file to tie it all together. Now the header file is included, or will be included, in both executable uh, sources. And uh, the uh, header file contains some uh, declarations for the functions that are available in the DLL so that uh, the programs can uh, compile against the DLL without uh, necessarily having the uh, DLL present. That's uh, the handy thing about header files. Uh, you can pretty much uh, target your application for whatever shared libraries might be available. And if you have a function that you would like to share um, <clears throat> that you think might be useful for more than one program, then the handy thing to do is to create a shared library like this. Um, we got one more target here, and that is uh, dupetest.exe. And that will depend on this DLL here. So this will be uh, one target right here. Um, we could move that up even. Uh, we'll call that uh, target 
two, and this will be target one here. This uh, standalone versus this uh, shared build here. Yep. We can show how uh, this might be aesthetically linked by uh, drawing some lines here, like so. Showing that diagram there, got one monolithic and one shared installation. So we got two styles of build here and two different operating systems. So that's four configuration options, all controlled by one make file. It's going to be fun. Let's start by creating our shared library, libdoop. If we put this at the top of the file, that'll tell it that I can run the file with uh, Anchor. Um, it'll automatically run it anyway. We can uh, make that executable. Uh, let's change this a bit here, and uh, we'll just make this... Uh, take a uh, string argument. So we've got uh, a string and a size and an error return. That's uh, kind of the convention that uh, X libraries use. So we've got to remind everyone to uh, free the pointer upon return from this function. And we're going to need some temporary variables. Yeah. I is good. Got the, uh, get the length of the string. We've got a spare index to use. We're going to initialize the error return to null. And we should probably uh, do some checking on the uh, U pointer that we're getting, the, the string input here. That empty string error. Going to uh, limit n here, the number, to uh, some exportable number that'll. Uh, apps can query that and uh, find out what uh, max repeat is supported. We'll set that to a thousand for now. Good, great. So if we've got an error, now we want to return here. Okay, now that we're done with our error checking, we want to make sure we want to uh, get some memory to work with. We don't cast malloc when we're writing in C code. There's no need for that. We 
we got n times length. So I've got the length of u here, which is the word that's coming in. And we've got uh, um, the length of that right here, len. So we've got n, which is the number, uh, the count here. It's the number of words times the length plus one. That's how many, uh, that's how long, uh, how much memory we're going to need. Size of our string looks good. Uh, there's one problem with this, and that is that uh, we should check the return value from malloc. Because uh, it can return null on rare occasions if we run out of memory, for example. So we could do it this way. And this is pretty common. And then just do some stuff here. Or we could wrap this in double parentheses. Or single parentheses for the pseudocode compiler. Same deal. It's the same thing, really. Just including it on one line. Just a matter of style, that's all. So we've got the index to zero. These are our start conditions. We're going to set that uh, t to the uh, temporary memory location here, or the return location. We've got some memory to play with. That's t now. Um, so as long as uh, i is less than uh, number of words, we're going to continue with this loop. And over here, okay. We can use this word, or we can use STP. STPN CBY. And that takes the uh, destination and a source and a number. So we can just go ahead and put that in there. Now, we've got to make sure that we terminate the end of the uh, string. Because all strings in C end with the null byte or octet. We don't really need a semicolon there because we're using the pseudocode compiler, but it doesn't matter. You can put one there or omit it and it'll uh, figure it out. So if we don't get a good malloc here, we got to warn people or, or, or give an error out. When we turn an out of memory error. If that's the case, and return. <clears throat> that should handle all our error functions and everything. Um, we don't have any includes here though, and we know strln, it's uh, part of the, uh, let's see, yeah, it's the string library right there, you gotta include string.h, so let's go ahead and do that. What else do we need? We've got malloc here, and that uses stdlib.h. We've got, uh, that's a string function there. We've got size t. I think that's standard def. That should do it for now. That's our function. That's our repeat function. Just takes a, a word and repeats it n times. Instead of U here, that's kind of confusing. You know, that's kind of bad programming practice. So we should probably call that word. That would be a much better word for a word. We 
I'm going to replace that. Where else is it? I think that's it. Save the file. Now we can put our main function in here. That uh, has got an int argument for the argument count and a pointer to a string array here. That's a list of arguments that uh, the program receives from the command line. Let's define some variables here. We need uh, a spare string to hold the uh, error return and another one for the uh, for the words, I guess. Uh, we use size T because that's the convention for uh, sizes because we could increase that later to beyond the size of int if we wanted to. We won't have to change anything. This tells it uh, that uh, we want to check to see if people supply enough arguments to this function, otherwise, uh, or this program. Otherwise, we're going to uh, put an error out there for uh, description. Yeah. So we got the argument count test. Now we need to get an int from the uh, argument here. And that doesn't work because uh, we have to convert that to string first using the ATOI function. That, uh, Yeah. Takes the initial portion of the string and converts it to an int. Yeah, it does a pretty good job. Doesn't return any errors or anything though. We'll just hope it works. It's got error checking. We're gonna run our repeat function up here. We're gonna test it. That's the first argument supplied to the to the program. That's going to be our uh, word, repeat word, first argument, number of times, second argument up there. And error return here. That's going to give us our error, if any. Yep. So now we can check it. And that's how we do that. That's pretty simple. That just says if uh, if S is valid, then we're going to print it. And then free the pointer. We've got to remember to free it. Remember, we reminded ourselves up here, must be freed. So we run free on that. And that'll release the memory so we don't have a memory leak, corruption or anything when that finishes. Uh... 
However, in the case there is an error, we want to do something else. Print the error return, return one, and that's our program. And it gives us some usage information when we try to run it. And since we're running it from as a script, we have to use this line up here, this command. And it prints 25 X's. Now if we double the number of X's here, it'll print uh, 25 of those. So this is working pretty well. We can also, because we're using that kind of a thing, uh, because of that, we can actually give it weird characters like this, and it'll print those too. It'll print Unicode, and uh, it's actually a handy way to uh, to print those Unicode strings. Hmm. What the heck is that? That's weird. I didn't notice that. <laughs> weird stuff. All right. I didn't explain this top part very well. This is very busy. It's running as a shell script. This ex executable C source code. Um, this line here, this first one, tells the bash interpreter to ignore, or, or actually it tells the compiler to ignore this part. And now we're running the anchor um, executable launcher with the run command, and we're going to run this source code, that's dollar sign zero is the name of this source file, and it's going to give it these arguments. We can pass other arguments to the uh, anchor runner, um, including libraries and library paths and uh, C flags, even compiler flags and, and stuff. It's all valid. Um, after it runs, we have to put this uh, semicolon and exit here to uh, exit out of the bash interpreter because, or the uh, shell, because we don't want the shell to go down and execute the rest of this C source code because that would probably give us very poor results. And something else I wanted to explain here is this level of indirection we've got going on here. These two asterisks there. The, uh, there's a pointer to pointer to char. What's up with that, huh? Well, see, ordinarily we would just have a pointer to char, but we're going to modify the pointer. And so we put a level of indirection on there. It just adds one more. Uh, see, we would, um, we're assigning the pointer to this identifier here, which is the uh, string itself. But this is actually a chunk of memory right there, holding that just happens to have that value in it. After this is compiled, that's data, and this is pointing to it. So we just take that, this part here, not that, but this part can be modified. You see, because it's because of the way C treats variables uh, passed to it, the arguments, you can't modify the arguments, but you can modify what the argument points to. That's where pointers come in handy. So we've got this level of indirection there. So we can modify that, and we can change it around, and it'll actually modify that portion of it. So we're modifying it, see? That's, that's what we're modifying right there. And uh, we're dealing with, with that. Anyway, I just thought I'd try to explain that. It's confusing, but uh, that is not what's happening here, although it's similar. Uh, 
we can also access them by index that way. So this, in this case, it's being used as a uh, multi-dimensional array, but in this case, it's just a level of indirection that we can use to assign things back out from the function. It's a way to return more than one value. Anyway, now that we're uh, done making this into one file and it runs, um, now that that works, and we can, you know, we can do uh, repeats, and, and everything is working. Let's uh, test the. Uh, let's see. See, it won't be, we test the range here. Negative one is out of range. Uh, 52, 52, that was out of range. So we can, uh, everything appears to be working. Let's uh, separate this out into our separate files that we talked about earlier. Um, first, we got to make the, uh, well, this part here shared. We want to share this with the world. And we want them to be able to link to it dynamically, then we'd make our own shared library with it. Save a copy here. We'll call that uh, do, yeah. So, yeah, we'll call that. Uh, dupe so we got lib dupe and dupe and we want one more file here save a copy lib dupe dot h and we've got uh, dupe lib dupe and lib dupe h and lib dupe we want to be that but we also want to include Libdoop H in our Libdoop, yeah. Include, we've got to put quotes around it because that's the way that's supposed to work. We also got to do that to uh, this one here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Libdoop H will include this part here. Well, not that, but it will include this. So we'll go ahead and move that over to libdubh. And we don't need that in there. And we don't need anything below here in libdubh. And we should put parentheses around that because this is C now in the header file. The header file is C. And uh, we should put uh, extern there because it's a header and that's this convention C most C compilers automatically put that in for you it's a ghost extern but uh, I don't know if it's tradition or what but uh, most header files have extern on the uh, ones on the functions that they are exporting to other applications and uh, and they'll just leave it off the ones that are private or yeah or even declare them static um, within that uh, private uh, library yeah they'll have their own static functions sometimes all right uh, this is called dupe and we can get rid of that because we're just using that part right there. Dupe, libdupe, and libdupe h. Uh, let's see if that's everything that we need here. We could. Uh,
this just tells it to uh, ignore multiple defines so we don't define that more than uh, we need to that's all we need for this file yeah so blank line there um, so we got dupe and we've got the uh, include up there and that's what's included in there and there now all we need is a make file to explain how to build this stuff so uh, let's create that make file now we'll just borrow this part here We'll call this uh, dupe. We've got uh, C flags. These are normal compiler flags here. Um, for test, we're running a debug build. So we got the G and the wall options and the pedantic. And this here tells us that we're using C99 as our compiler or uh, um, version, or I mean, C version, yeah. Okay. Now to compile uh, C files, this is the line I was talking about to use Anchor to take those C, uh, those Ank files and turn them into C code for us. That's the magic there. Now, if we need to. Uh, get our C, C files, we need to turn them into object files. And that's what this does here. We're using our C flags and we need includes. Now to get our includes, we're going to put those up here. Those are the standard includes, We've got USR include and the current directory right there so that part should build and this is all kind of boilerplate stuff here what we're doing now we could say uh, see that's our compiler CC this allows people to change their compiler by changing the CC environment variable to point to their, or yeah, compiler name. Um, okay, here we go with uh, see we can do it this way, where we just decide by the uh, requirements, or we can do it some other way. So we build object files into .so files if those are needed. Or we can do uh, object files into DLL files. We could do it that way. I chose to do it a different way and that was to make a lib variable. And that just tells whether to use one or the other. So it's just going to compile object files into whatever the type of lib that we want. That way we can define it up here we can auto detect it and same down here cc uh, lib lib flags
the macro for whatever comes in and whatever goes out. That's the output there. So lib flags, output, output libs. We didn't we didn't specify those. Uh, one way to do that would be uh, set up an uh, auto configure portion of this make file. Now you can do a separate configure program, but uh, this makes it simpler. This is a pretty simple template. And we're just going to build our own make file and put uh, the uh, static libs and everything right in there. Um, the static libs, that's going to be, um, we're going to take all our, uh, all of our lib files, basically. And uh, that is lib.anch. And what we want to do with those is we want to uh, path subst. Substitute uh, ink with uh, dot .o on all of those. So that'll take uh, the ink extension and turn them all into dot .o uh, for the ones that start with lib and end in anch. So Basically, that's just one file right now, the uh, libdupe.anch, and we're going to build uh, libdupe.o with that. That's for static libs, static linking. We've got our static libs right there. How about that? Another thing we need is lib flags, and that is shared. And uh, we could have another flag there to uh, tell it that we're building a DLL. And the header file could use that if we were uh, using a different compiler. But uh, we don't need it right now. It doesn't really do anything right now. But... Uh, you can use that for C D E C L C D E C L D L L import stuff. I'll put a link to that. I don't know. It's supposed to optimize the compilation, but uh, it doesn't seem to work on Ming W very well. And uh, I think the uh, it might have optimized it out or something. It might be automatic now I don't know, or unnecessary. I can't seem to find any info on it. We've got the includes. We've got the lib being .so for uh, Linux. But we wanted to test to see if we're on Windows. So we go if not equal to nothing find string Ming W dot uh, or comma CC. That that is basically if Ming W is the compiler or in the compiler string there equals dot exe and lib is dot dll. So. We've got an ext now and a lib. Otherwise, lib is dot so. But if it's Ming W, it's dll. That just makes a decision based on whether we're using a Ming W compiler or not. Now these are extra flags we can add for uh, building a dll on. Uh, um, Linux, yeah, because this is the Linux part here. And these are extra flags for uh, position-independent code. 
we add that to C flags on Linux. It's also optional. It gives you a warning if you don't put that in there, though. So we'll put that. And we need one more thing. And those are the little L libs on the end of the uh, compiler command when you're building, uh, when you're linking against the dynamic libraries. And we just need to uh, find those path subs again. lib.o, um, that becomes L percent. So this L lib um, static libs. That's our automatic configuration right there. That'll uh, sort out whether we got uh, libs or not, where to put them. Uh, they'll be going down here. Lib flags. Yep. We need uh, to build our EXEs too. That's the extension optional on Linux. It's dot uh, nothing. <laughs> it is nothing uh, on Windows. It's dot exe. And if we get, get uh, if we need to build those, the make file uh, is told to uh, build them from object files. Also, and with uh, compiler. using uh, that output and LD flags and the L libs we just uh, defined there. So that uh, that's for building the uh, the exe if necessary linking to the uh, to the library. Actually, you know that isn't necessary right there. <laughs> All right, let's uh, duplicate that. We don't need that there, but in the case of a shared exe, which would be uh, test exe, that also builds from an object file and includes the libs. So that's our uh, loop test exe target right there. With the extra libs, l libs uh, options tagged onto the end there. All right, and now to make dupe, that's our first target. This is our default target. We could call it test, but that'd be confusing. So we're gonna make dupe, but this this is what you get when you just type make. Make automatically builds the first nine percent target that it finds, and that's gonna be dupe name these are the requirements or the dependencies for dupe that's going to use those all the uh, dot o the name dot o and the uh, the static libs this is their static build so that's our static libs the compiler um, Static libs again. Name.exe optional. LD flags. 
because of the linker flags to build the uh, library and link it right into the static executable one big huge file uh, yeah we want to change those into tabs too before we forget but uh, we'll do that we'll remember it'll warn us or I mean it'll error if we don't got a shared build again we got name.o <coughs> And uh, the same static libs as before. But we also want our dynamic uh, DLL file. So we're going to tell it to build our DLL file in addition to uh, the, the test file. So we're going to have to build the test and the DLL with this shared object. Uh, shared target, yeah. Again, path subs, you can take our object files. Um, What we did there was just took those static libs, which are the uh, L, no, not those. Yeah, those are .o files, and we just convert them into .dll files or .so, depending on what kind of magic tests we did up here. So, yeah, that'll uh, automatically build our uh, static libs name dash test extension. That's our shared target. And now we get a clean target. Yeah, clean thing. Remove bomb. Name dot test. ext name ext that should be good for now there's another thing we can do if we want to keep the uh, C object files around the C files that are generated we can make those secondary so essentially we're just telling it to keep all the C files around for later. We can comment that out if we want to. Uh, it'll erase the C files and just use the uh, the ANCH, the uh, um, pseudocode files. We can compile pseudocode to C and then it'll automatically delete the intermediate C files and uh it'll look weird but it'll work yeah we can just continue development in uh pseudocode if we want just delete that or or, or comment that line out and build pseudocode we leave it in there or comment it out so that uh, we can debug things later if we want sometimes it's handy to bring up the c file and see if there's any bugs in the uh, anchor um, translation happening. All right, we can try a building with this make file now. Oh yeah, that's right, the error, the error, forgot the error. We've got to convert these to tabs. There. 
good. Puts. Implicit warning there. What uh, file do we need for that? We need stdio.h. We need to put that in our header file. Somebody forgot to put stdio.h in there. Now what are we doing? Make clean and make it again. Implicit declaration of that. Uh, let's see. STP uh, and CPY. This one, yeah. There we go. Now the, now the line will be correct. That one requires string H. I thought I included string H. Yeah. String H is included. Okay. I see what the problem is. Well, we're just gonna have to use old good old string string copy. Um it's not present, it should be, but it's not really there. And uh well, we can get rid of this other cruft up here. Uh Yeah, now it builds fine. Great. Uh, let's try uh, running it and testing our uh, our new uh, file here. Undefined symbol repeat. Of course, uh, because we're running the uh, we're trying to run against the. Uh, dynamic version. We're not ready for that yet. There, we got dupe x25 and that's working. So the uh, um, static version is compiled. Let's try making the shared version. Oh yeah. No rule to make dupe tests. Right. That should be dupe test right there. Just a few typos in the make file. Got a dot o there, a dot o there, and it's path subs, not path subs. Anyway, uh, yeah, I uh, cannot find l dupe. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, more typos. It's pat subs. And uh, up here, we got a uh, percent sign there. It's supposed to be a dollar sign. Anyway, uh, make sure. There we go. Finally. A lot of typos. I should have typed too quick. Anyway, that's working. We've got our build, our shared build, and our. Uh, regular build. We can test our shared build now by running dupe.anch and of course it's going to say undefined symbol. Oh, we want to put uh, these flags here into our uh, run command. Yeah. There. Very well. That works because we're linking at runtime and it's dynamically compiling and running and linking um, against the shared library at runtime and all that because it's there. Um, we can go further and test the uh, compilation steps on Windows. 
Let's do that. Let's see here. How would we uh, go about that? No, we're not uh, in the right folder for that. There we are. We've got dupe test, dupe, lib dupe, and all that. Let's uh, um, um, clean this up and switch over to Windows building by going um, w64.env. Yeah, there we go. Get that visible. Uh, we're building for Windows. We're in the Windows environment. Now we can go make. That should build our exe. Everything went well. There it is. We can test that with wine. Usually takes a minute to start up. Yeah, that's working. Um, good. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Wine has trouble with those kinds of characters. All right. Let's do what we got now with uh, shared build for Windows. So we've got libdupe.dll and dupe test.exe and dupe. You'll notice uh, dupe test here is a little bit smaller than dupe. Now on bigger files it would make an even bigger difference, but uh, we've got uh, a little bit of space savings by using the DLL here. Not much, but like I said, with the big application, um, it could be some significant space saving if you put a lot of functions into a shared DLL and use them between your applications. All right, let's try the uh, shared version here. And that one's working too. Now we can take this uh, libdupe DLL and delete it or uh, and try that again. And of course it'll fail because it's depending on that shared library. And there it is again, working. All right, so that's how we build um, a uh, template. Now hopefully whenever we want to uh, have this make file we can reuse it for other projects. The only thing we have to change is the name and uh, everything else is automatically determined for one library. I'm not sure how it would work for two. It might work. It might need further debugging. I don't know. But for a simple template for a single file and a possible shared library or a monolithic static build. Either way, four different options, one make file. It's not too bad. If you want anything more elegant, then use autoconf, automake. Uh, there'll be a link for that too in the description. Have fun with it. I just want to make a couple of quick changes here. I wanted to check for a maliciously long string. Um, we'll give it a max uh, a word size or something. A straight max string. Something like that. Um, then we'll give an error. String too large error. We can define that in the header somewhere as a hundred. And uh, let's see. Also, I would like to uh,
f print f standard error that'll send this out to the uh error terminal instead of um standard in which would be the uh normal terminal output it'll still display in the terminal but it won't uh concatenate into other scripts and stuff um that should probably do it right there let's uh compile that make shared uh something's wrong oh i didn't put an equal sign in there all right Let's try that again. And test it. We want to put a very long string in here and test to see if we get an error there. String too large. So it's still printing the errors, but they're uh, appearing in a different channel. Uh, and we'll be able to test that too by uh, creating a file here. Um, we could pipe that to a file. Let's see here. Um, we could direct uh, error channel 2 to a file named error. And we've suppressed the error output. output. We see uh, exit code 1 here, which means there was an error, but we piped it to the error channel. Cat the error, which is... Uh, way to print what the file contents are it says out of range so it's working we've got a, an error channel and, and a standard output and uh, we've tested the length of the string and the repeats and stuff it's repeating characters on demand and here that's working now if we cat the error um, again We'll see nothing because there was no error this time. And that's uh, how an error log works. We just did a little bit of logging. All right. Thanks for watching.